What is going on today, everyone? It is Monday and we have seen yet another very nice day in the stock market for quantum AI drone. The quantum momentum is not slowing down, at least at this moment in time. We're going to look at our quantum watch list, which was bright green. And we're going to look at some other stocks as well today. We're going to do this in a short period of time. So I hope you're ready. Buckle in. We're going to talk about at least five or six different quantum stocks and a bunch of other stocks, non-quantum that I'm looking at as well as I have a pretty broad portfolio and I like to invest in a lot of things. So if you can do me one favor, hit that like button and let's jump right in. So as you can see here on the quantum watch list, we are having some absolutely crazy moves, especially in quantum cybersecurity. So we saw BTQ was up to $9.10 today. So BTQ hit its all-time high and is even running an aftermarket. Quantum Emotion had a beautiful day at a 15%. Seal SQ had a very bad day and then suddenly a very good day at the end. So we'll look at the chart and we'll see how that played out in the candlesticks. So we can see that today was about quantum cybersecurity. And then we saw names like IonQ, D-Wave, Rigetti, QTUM, basically down the quantum watch list, everything was green except QUBT. And we're gonna talk about QUBT, but basically they diluted again. This is the frustrating thing for me covering quantum stocks is specifically QUBT. They, they just did a $500 million dilution. So why do they need $750 million? I, I think that it felt to me a little bit, they know that the quantum market is hot and they're taking advantage of that. And I did not like the dilution here. I don't think there's a justification for that. And then our other watch list today, we saw some big moves again. So you know that the last video I posted, we were talking about Archer and having a potential breakout after the air show. And that absolutely happened with almost an 18% day. Airship actually had a nice new contract and was up almost 20%. Redcat 13, UAVs 12 sourcing, continued buying in the drone industry. Plug Power is now a $4 share stock. I started talking about this in the ones and twos, if you guys have been following the channel. Seal SQ, $5 close, pretty incredible there. And then of course, Ondis, it seems every day is green. Don't know when this is gonna stop, but it's been an incredible run for Ondis. And then even Big Bear AI is getting a little stronger, 769 at the close, just kind of creeping up there. I like that Big Bear has chilled out and slowed down a little bit. Okay, so we saw that, of course, this morning, the big news was that AMD and ChatGBT have a deal and that sent AMD stock skyrocketing up 24% on the day. And Lisa Su, one of my favorite CEOs on Wall Street, she just seems like a genuine nice person. <clears throat> She's saying here in this article that AI critics are thinking too small after the massive deal. I would say that's probably thinking too small. You have to really look at the power of this technology and what it can do for the world. So we get confirmations all the time that the AI trade is alive and well. Trump eyes healthcare talks with the Democrats to end shutdown. So we are amidst a shutdown. The stock market doesn't seem like it cares that much, but here's what we have. We are speaking to, with the Democrats and some very good things could happen with respect to healthcare, Trump told reporters. I'm a Republican, but I want to see healthcare much more so than Democrats. And we're going to get into the stocks now. So everyone's favorite part, and we're going to have some fun with it. So Rigetti hit an all-time high of $43 a share, and it sold down to around $41.70. Now, this year, this stock could be purchased for $6. So that, if we just calculate that move after the Jensen sell-off and panic, that's a 600% gain so far this year. And it does look like it is quite overbought and overstretched and it looks like it needs to cool down and have some cool down. So I wouldn't be surprised if we saw some pullback in Rigetti. There wasn't specific news for Rigetti that was pushing the buying, but 
the stock just continues to move up. IonQ posted an all-time high today, again looking like potentially a breakout for IonQ as it broke past its previous resistance of 75.51, and now we're looking at 78.99 at the close, and in the post market, it's up to $79. I'm very interested to see when the dust settles on all of this, what these stocks are going to do, if there's gonna be a large correction or pullback or a smaller correction and pullback, and if we're gonna see something like we saw with INQ back here where they tried sideways. This last few trading weeks, we've just been seeing the stocks move up and up and up and up. So when will they start to trade more sideways? When will they pull back? You know, it's very hard to say if you're betting against these stocks, you've had kind of a bad year, to put it lightly. And if you're trying to time the top, it you, you kind of had a fake out here and now it's even much higher. So those puts and shorts are absolutely fried at this point in time. So Iron Q continues to the upside. It looks like it has momentum and volume. Every indicator is there and it's about a month away from earnings. I'm expecting a stronger quarter over quarter for Ion Q, hopefully because there's no real justification at this point for their valuation. So let's take a look at D Wave. So D Wave is a stock that we've been talking about on this channel. I made this channel back here and was talking about D Wave when this was $4 a share. And today we hit an 866% return. The stock moved up to $36.5. I actually had some time this weekend to listen to Dr. Alan Barat's keynote to that the address he gave in Japan and found it very fascinating. So if you have time, check that out. I might do a react to that specific keynote because there were some good nuggets in there. Nothing new really, but the way that they're speaking about themselves and organizing information is still very interesting. And D-Wave with their Wales contract and their recent Comcast contract is seeing some upward momentum with a very big move today at 7%. Okay, Seal SQ. So this was what I was talking about with Seal SQ is we actually saw that Seal SQ opened, opened negative and was dumped down to 421 and then was pushed up to 535 on a ton of volume. So it looks like some whales or institutions may have moved on the stock at the 440 and made some positions late in the trading day. And that pushed the stock over $5. We can see it's just below $5 in post. CLSQ is a very volatile stock. Be very careful with this one. Be very careful with all quantum stocks because they are getting to the point where they are overbought and it's very hard to tell when that correction is gonna happen, when they're gonna pull back and what support levels there are going to be. I did want to really briefly go back to D-Wave's chart and mention this $33. We have this beautiful little area, and I've been talking about this on the Discord. We had this beautiful area where we just saw D-Wave bump its head on 33, 33, 33, 08, 33, reject, reject, reject. And this gives us a nice indication for what might happen in the future on pullback. Maybe we would see that 3308 would come into play as both a support or resistance in the future. Okay, now BTQ. So BTQ Technologies, I've been telling the Discord that I think this is one of those stocks with their specific technology and blockchain, their limited tenure on the NASDAQ. They're barely a week old or two weeks old that this isn't gonna be a stock that can be purchased for under $10 a share. So I've been trying to build up my position, buy some shares under $10 and this thing keeps going higher and higher. And as you can see, today it had that monster candle and there was some news today effectively expose blockchain and it could expose crypto and the ledgers and the public ledgers and all those people's private information could become public. So lots of investment pouring into quantum cybersecurity stocks today, including QNCCF. So I have BTQ on my watch list and I believe that this stock will be over $10 a share in no time. And taking a look at QNCCF, quantum emotion came alive today with a 14% move. And I wanna show you all kind of where this is. So we did have this gap up on the TSMC we touched at 147 and then we sold down to about 70 cents a share for quite a while. There wasn't much demand for this stock and suddenly we find ourselves 
in this uptrend and suddenly there's a lot of demand again and there's volume coming in and a dollar 20 is kind of right in the middle we can look at this kind of as maybe a bull flag here so if we look at this like this and we stretch our imagination that could potentially be a bull flag and could we see quantum emotion push past a dollar 70 into all-time highs all right qubt i don't even want to look at this disgusting chart they don't deserve <laughs> They don't deserve to be where they are. They don't deserve to be a $22 stock. They've diluted for $1.2 billion and they've they take one question on their earnings calls. I just like the trust is the big missing ingredient for Quantum Computing Inc. I know a lot of you who follow this channel are in there and look at the price action, the gap down and people are gonna buy this anyway because it's a quantum name and good for them for bolstering their cash position. Long-term, it will be good for them. But what have you done with that 500 million? Why do you need another 750 million? That's my question. I'm done looking at this chart. Let's look at non-quantum stocks. All right, Airship. So we know that Airship got this $10 million contract, which isn't a huge contract in the AI world, but it's huge for Airship. And they had a 20% day. On the two hour candles, we can see lots of volume moved in and stock pushed up to almost $7 a share. AI stocks are hot and continue to be hot. On watch for me is 750, 760 to break that. And then Airship has traded at 12 and $14. So maybe it's making a run. If it can break above 761, we'll draw out that line there. We'll see if Airship can move to the upside. Okay, Honest. So Honest is one I was excited to talk about. So Honest was and is a diaper company, personal care company. And I got interested in it because financial education, Jeremy had mentioned it and I started looking into their financials. I like their financials. He actually, in his video a night or two ago, in his seven stocks he's buying, mentioned this and, this, and he's a big enough YouTuber that when he mentions a stock, it can definitely help move it. And we did see that today that Honest was up 8% and that's a lot for a diaper stock. And um, I did alert the Discord as well that I had picked up some calls for February at the $5 strike. I really like the risk reward. They have a great track record of delivering in their earnings calls. $9 is potentially in reach if they can continue to give us those nice earnings. And not only that, I think sentiment is shifting that we may have found a bottom here at 350. They do make quite a bit of money, unlike quantum companies. Quantum companies don't make any money at this point in time. So check out Honest if you're interested in potentially a decent deal with a good risk reward. All right, and Archer Aviation. So we had talked about Archer Aviation potentially this weekend doing an electric vertical takeoff. They didn't, but their stock did as they saw a 17, 18% rip to the upside. And we had, we've had two rejections and sharp sell-offs from this point, but we can see in post that we've actually broken 1375. So Archer might actually be hunting for its all-time highs, which would be this 1848. So I personally got out of most of my leverage on Archer today. I had some open calls at the $9 strike. I felt like I made enough. And if it rejects here and moves back down, no sweat off my back. If it goes up, great. I have lots of shares and I'm positioned with Archer. So keep watching Archer to the upside. If I had to guess, it might have more steam, but this could also be a sell the news event right so people are buying this rumor about tesla and archer could easily be just that a rumor and it could sell down finally plug power so plug power has been on an absolute tear i started looking at this as an alternative energy play and there's been such a demand for energy that i started buying it around a dollar 50 and we had this uptrend channel we broke the uptrend channel and then moved back into it and then lately on some deals they've had in Europe with European clients, the demand for energy and power is there and plug is seeing itself move up 15%, 15%, 15%. We were talking about this at $1.50. 
now it's four. So there's opportunities and money to be made in this market. Anyway, I hope you guys really enjoyed this content. We covered over 11 stocks in about 15 minutes, 16 minutes. Who's doing it like that? If you like content like this, hit the like button. If you want more content like this, subscribe. We'll see you in the next one. I hope you really enjoyed that content. It's my goal to provide quality content as much as possible and with as little interruption as possible. If you'd like to support my efforts in the channel, I offer three different membership options. It's super easy to sign up and it starts at just $4.99 a month. And you just click the subscribe button and you can learn more.